I'd say let's go ahead with some introductions. I'll go first. I'm Marie Norton. I'm Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. I've been contributing to Fedora since 2014, and I've been in this role for a little bit under a year. So, Vipul, you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, well, I'm Vipul, and I work in CPE, which is Community Platform Engineering at Red Hat. Uh, job why is my primary responsibility is to take care of CI, uh, CI infrastructure, a little bit of Fedora CI. I also am involved in containers, so I guess like releasing containers, images on Docker Hub kind of thing. Uh, but I'm in Mindshare for summer coding seat, which means I try to look after and interact with coordinators, students for all the mentored project activities, making sure that they go right. And I recently joined Mindshare, I guess, a month ago. Time has no concept, we all know, so don't mark me on, don't count me on that. Yeah, that's what I have been trying to do. <laughs> Maria, go ahead. Okay, so I'm Tatika. Nobody calls me actually Maria, but official name and the passport is Maria. Uh, currently, we are starting into Mindshare to give some of my expertise on all of this mess for the past a lot of years, let's not say how many. Um, usually taking care of a lot of design in Latin America and marketing and websites and documentation and let's just name it, I was there except coding because I'm lazy. I just don't understand it. Uh, but I think that there is a lot of cool things to readapt and I hope to be a good asset for the team on it. And that's it. <laughs> I need a beer. <laughs> Come on, Alberto. Albert. Okay. Uh, my name is Alberto. Um, I am a computer engineer. Uh, actually, I work and uh, I contribute in Fedora for Minsher. Come up, Fedora join, Fedora marketing, and a little, a little more groups. I don't know how much. Um, I am happy to be here with you, uh, Nas. I'll do you what to ask. Okay. Uh, my name is Edward Lucena. Um, uh, I'm a representative from marketing for way too long. I need a replacement, please. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't judge me. I love being in Mindshare, but is is I'm here from the beginning of the Mindshare committee because marketing is having some issues. We're working on it in this nest. Um, also, I work in, I, I'm the host of the Fedora Postcats. I'm a contributor from 2006, thing, more or less. I don't know, Tatika was my mentor, so. Uh, also, I'm producing with uh, some folks, the Fedora i3 spin. So that's me. Cool, nice intros, everybody. I'm just trying to get a little conversation going here in the chat. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, if you want to jump onto the the moderation or the screen with us, you you can do that as well. Also, Justin put a uh, 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 post on. I don't know how it's called this. Discord? No, no, this is not mm -hmm. Discord. The mm -hmm. discourse about posting how is your nest. This is very fun. I I, I built my one because I was fun that I have my TV as as complementary oh, screen. The rig. <laughs> are we talking about the rig? Yeah. Yeah, we should share our desk setups, like how we are enjoying Nest. Would be pretty nice to so, see. Let's see. Where is that link, Edward? You should drop it in the chat. Oh, you did it. Yeah, it's already in the chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, this person on a bike. 
That's great. Mine is not this fancy. I'm sitting at my kitchen table. Might not look like it, but I am. <laughs> oh, there's a new one. Hey, Langdon. Hey, Langdon, how are you? So I guess we could talk about some of the stuff we've been up to. Sleepy. <laughs> Are you jet lagged? Jason, what's up, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> if there is something that I can say, that this is probably the funniest month here ever. <laughs> or everybody's <laughs> drunk and I can hear it. But I don't think that should go. Messing with <clears throat> Uh, Langdon, yeah, I'm not jet lagged. I'm also sleepy. That's real. It's been like two and four hour sleeping segments this week. Oh, yeah. You know how it is. It's okay, Peter. We missed you, though. All right. So let's start talking about some of the stuff we worked on since we're not getting questions. You might as well. Is this working? Or we could just, pre we could have our mind share oh, meeting on honey. Wednesday. Nick, what's up? Hi, Nick. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. we can. Really okay. Nice. I was uh, mute. Uh, well, I was, my sound was off at first, so you could probably hear me, but I couldn't hear you. Well, welcome. Uh, welcome. Please introduce you. Yeah. <laughs> introduce me. Um, my name's Nick. I'm NB on IRC and like everything. Um, of course, I'm on Mindshare, and I help with packaging and infrastructure and stuff, and ambassadors sometimes and stuff. We can talk a little bit about my, what Mindshare does. So Mindshare has reps from all different parts of the Mindshare side of Fedora. So marketing, we have intern, we have... Uh, design and uh, com ops. We have some ambassador seats. So the idea is to bring all these people together to kind of have a holistic picture of what we can kind of do and what the status is of the different teams and kind of put our heads together and be able to bring the resources together to do more together. So uh, something we would usually be doing a lot of is looking at proposal for attendance to events. Um, so we, we sponsor people to go to events normally, like pre-COVID world. You know, if you wanted to go to a conference and talk about your work with Fedora, we would sponsor you to go do that and help you out with the lodging and all that stuff. Um, that's pretty much for anyone who wants to do that. We also help folks organize local events. So whether it be a release party or, uh, you know, a fad or whatever, whatever kind of small event you want to do locally, we give you support for that as well as send out swag. So uh, what we kind of ask in return for those things is a blog post to kind of share your experience with the community and, uh, you know, to try to improve Fedora overall. So that's some of the work we do. Uh, it's been a lot less the last couple months because uh not really traveling or going going very far from home these days um that was a a good chunk of what we we did but we've actually had a chance to focus on um other topics like the ambassador revamp uh program we spent plenty of time talking about ambassadors uh in the mindshare committee meetings and um you know, that actually went somewhere this time. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, I'm just kind of talking if someone else wants to pick up. What else, what other kinds of stuff do we do? We have so diverse people, everyone does a lot of things, but then there are seats, what they're focused on. I could talk about CI, but that's not why I'm in Mindshare. So I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Sumantra, as mentioned, we help a lot with mentored projects. 
uh, Sumantru and Murray do a lot of things around there. Somehow I ended up here. I don't know how. <laughs> uh, uh, there's GSOC, there is Outreach. We also had GCI, which Google uh, stopped doing it from this year. And one of the focus that well, I want to work on, I'm not saying how much I have been working on because it's been hard recently, but our focus should be how much of the impact those projects, how much do we need those projects? How much does community want it instead of just having projects? I know it can be controversial to say, but I'm not exactly 100% sure that all our projects are very much, okay, <laughs> as I said, controversial, right? 100% of the things that are 100% utilized, but I guess it's never is. Uh, so, but increasing the optimization of the projects that we have and how much we can uh, utilize, use it for the best. Uh, contributor sustainability is one of the things that we have been trying to work with. Uh, it's not just minted project interns, but more of it. As we say, ambassadors, right? Uh, the people who do a lot of outreach, a lot of work for Fedora, who are a pillar of Fedora. So, how do we? Keep them happy, sustained. That's also, I see a responsibility of mindset. So things that Fesco does not do, which is other than engineering thing, at some point, I somewhere I see that it should be done by mindset, which is community. Uh, how do we make community happy and how do we make sure that they, they are respected here, they are wanted and they feel good and then they are sustained, as in sustained contribution, they feel as a family and not just workers that we have often discussed on different tickets and there's lines, kind of, of, lines of communication lines of communication yes. is a really important part of it and we mm -hmm. do try to improve that like communication and how we do the different processes so that things don't fall through the cracks as well well uh, <laughs> when my show starts like i don't know it's been too long i think it's two years ago probably nick probably more like two or three years ago uh, the main idea was that the non-technical um, part of Fedora uh, were totally disconnected. So marketing, ambassadors, design, um, Fama, Fansco, at the time that this part, of, everything is part of, uh, of ambassadors. They were like um, Iceland. So now the idea of Malaysia was to try to have a communication board that served to be a bridge between the teams and between the technical parts of the team because um, a huge um, problem that was in, in, in first times was that we have people that are supposed to be marketing and supposed to be ambassadors, to be, supposed to be the face of Fedora, but they don't know what is happening in the technical part. So how can you promote an operative system if you don't know what is inside? So that that was the first ideas that came with uh, with the my short team. That seems like so a pretty was... good overview of the different things yeah. that we do. We also look at like some policy type things that have to do with the mind share side of Fedora. So, you know, looking at like change proposals, like how do we do with that for community related things there's no formal process there um helping or trying to kind of formulate how we're going to go from in-person events to uh, online or virtual events you know we'll probably be the ones to kind of work up a process for hopping um so uh yeah that's that's a good summary of all the stuff we work on right is it enough? Yeah, also we have Peter. I just want to say because he's not here and he does a lot of work around documentation. So I guess that's also one of our main focus that they are indexed, they are easy to reach, they are up to date, and those things. We have yet to come up with strategy, or at least from what I see and from what I understand, we have yet to see a strategy that encompasses all of these things. But that's definitely one of the things that Mindshare would want to look at. Since there are no questions, I have one question for Edward and Nick and uh, if probably Alberto, who have been on Mindshare for a longer time. Have you seen any change or involvement in what Mindshare was made to do and now what it is trying to do? Do you see any involvement in their evolution of our goal, vision? Uh, sure, sure. Um, when we started, we have... Um... Well, there is a known problem with Ambassador for a long, long time. 
and I think that the the current proposal is a uh, long-term work. We are working in this like for the beginning of the mindshare committee and people was expecting that we work on that but it's a so hard topic that it takes to us too much time but now we have a um, solid proposal so for me that's evolution that's the world being uh reflected in actions not only in meetings not only in words not only in emails or or meeting right. or irc channels it's just it's work that is being done and hopefully uh we have Tons of people wanted to collaborate in this uh, proposal. We have, I think, two uh, excellent uh, people that is uh, that are, are will be driving the the initiative. That are Sumantro and Mariana, and hopefully uh, we are going to be this uh, this work is going to be more visible to the people now that we have action meetings. It's going beyond the the lot of meetings or words that have been written about it. Yep. I still have also my problem with marketing. There is nobody else in my team, but. <laughs> Alberto wow. wants to be part of your team. <laughs> yeah, but Alberto yeah. leave my team for commons. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. And you know what would be really kind of interesting to do as we do this, um, if the ambassador revamp is to just like really like document how we do those changes well, because if it, if it, I mean, eventually it will be success, right? So there's always going to be some failures and uh, just kind of documenting how that goes and sharing that process, because I think that something like a program dying out is somewhat natural if it doesn't evolve, right? So how do you revive those kinds of programs? I mean, when we think about something like marketing, um, I do think like, I've heard these stories about like the good old days and Tatika might be able to tell me more, but like, didn't the design team used to be up in the IRC channels like every day chatting and working on stuff all the time? No. Everything went to into a more complicated set, and then you started to have several channels for the same thing, and several boards for the same thing, and several groups for the same thing. So it is true that if you divide, you can conquer, but that doesn't apply to everything. And I think that it was a mistake to. It was a mistake to. <laughs> do you start? That is so cute. So I think that, that instead of trying to oh, I mean, uh, so instead of just trying to keep dividing, we should probably just try to take a look of everything that we have currently and see which one of those we can either merge or make work together uh, in a better way, more and more smoothly. It is the same thing that you said. The idea is to work as a bridge. Sometimes we will have to merge, sometimes we will have to separate because they are going to argue. But the idea is that as Mindshare, try to focalize why there is people willing to help, but it's too divided. Yeah! To so many places that they get lost. Nice. Okay. Um, so there's this, <laughs> my cat, she's not around right now. I would totally bring her on screen. <laughs> So there's this idea, uh, you know, that if you're working on, if a team is working on like 20 things or one thing, they're going to deliver 20 times as quickly or 20 times as slowly as if they're working on one thing. So I think we're all like a, a group of people with ideas, right? And part of what how Fedora works is if you have an idea, you do it. Um, but when it <laughs> when it comes to community stuff, it involves other people. You, you can't just make decisions unilaterally and you're trying to get people on board with these plans, right? And you're just having these conversations and they're, they're just going on and on in the ticket and then it kind of just dies off and nothing happens, right? So I think a nice evolution of Mindshare would be um, maybe less of that and more like we're just going to focus on this one thing 
and make it happen. And that's what I've been trying to do a bit with the team. Uh, and even trying to say, like, okay, these people are working on this. Like, let's not distract them and take them off of that um, and assign them more work, you know? So thinking about using your resources well to accomplish one awesome thing together, create that sustainably and move on to the next. So I think we have a ten we do have a tendency to like go all over the place with our ideas. Because we have a ton of them. I have a ton of them. Yeah, I know the feeling because when I have I'm working with the I3 is being now, but I didn't want to start the work now because I was trying to focus myself in the podcast. But there was a lot of people that say, hey, you have the idea, but put it out there. So say, okay, I'm going to put it out there, but I'm not working on them. <laughs> if you're going to do the work, I will be happy to create the structure. And happily, uh, Nasir, that is in the chat right now, step uh, the uh, ahead yeah. and with the spin creation. And uh, we have um, a default of the Dan, Dan, Dan Sherp. I don't know how to pronounce that, that last name, but <laughs> uh, Dan uh, Follows, follows of, if I'm not wrong. And then is we have Dan? Southern Gentlemen as well. Yeah. Uh, let's just go with Dan. <laughs> Dan. He'll be, he'll be he, happy, yeah. he works on the packaging of the i3 package. And my work will be just like gather the people together. But I wasn't able to, to work more further than that because I was focusing myself in the podcast. Hey, I hear you. They, uh, they, there are so many things that I thought to try or I had in mind, but then again, like work is there, plus you have some other thing. One of the small thing, how do you fit a the magazine post? And I was very interested in uh, restarting it. I took up the job. Uh, some I started sharing some threads. I got great response. We had answers, but lack of time. And also when you are doing it, when very tired, the sentences and the documentation don't come as you would want them to. But then thankfully we had Fedora join, just like we got Nasif from Fedora join uh, for i3 and uh, other a uh, bunch of different places, uh, two people from Federal Joint came forward and they are helping me and they are doing amazing job. Uh, to a point where I said, you know what, I'm just going to introduce you to these people who I think are great candidates. Of course, you can have your own, and you should be the editor of this. I don't even need access to those parts because you are doing most of the job. So it's also, you know, these initiatives they may not end up, but if you try to share it with people <laughs> like everybody uh, everybody you did and then i did with how do you fedora this things are not pretty well and i'm very really excited about those things so yeah. taking initiatives <laughs> so part of i think another part of the evolution of what we're do like what we're doing here as a as a mind share committee and how we take care of our teams and stuff like that is looking into those like hey what is your capacity actually um, and how much like can you do checking in with people to make sure you know your fellow contributor I have I'm doing check-ins with the co-leads and I made them really aware like if you're ever getting to feel like it's too much let's handle this <laughs> let's handle this early and I've been having the same kind of conversations with the DNI team too because as contributors especially in these parts of the Fedora community burnout can happen kind of quickly because you have one two person teams right so we got to be careful with ourselves and the rest of our things we want to do in life like vip well, i don't want to hear stories about how you can't write docs because you're so exhausted <laughs> true <laughs> like but it's the it, it happens so, so right we got to figure yeah. out like we want we want you to be enjoying that time that you're you're spending on working on Fedora, Should, unless you really like being like strung out with work. Being miserable, yeah, that's one of my hobby, and <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting back to it for some reason. <laughs> you know, a lot, of, I, I think, a lot of us are workaholics here. I think that the magazine does I, that. I think is it can be really productive for all the teams, not only for Mindshare, but for all the teams. And they have um, they have a template, but we cannot create. We can create it maybe in a Pagor instance. I don't know that you call Fedora ideas. What just what idea do you have that people can say? Okay, I don't have any idea, but I have time to spare. So let me see what people have on, in on their minds. 
that's totally okay. I think we can gather lots of people thinking about what can be done or what can we be include or what can be an extra, not necessarily inside the, the OS, but uh, inside the community. That's stuff that we can do. For example, I thought, I think uh, at some point I say, hey, we can gather some kind of Fedora stories. And like one month after, uh, I don't remember how how is the name of that guy, how it started a series called How Do You Fedora on the magazine. And it, and it was sadly like that. I say, hey, we could gather people, not necessarily um, developers inside the community, but normally users. How do you Fedora? How do you use Fedora in your daily, in your daily life? And the, I think it was a, a, a very big um, series of articles in the magazine. So we can put ideas in, in kind of a board where people can just grab an idea and try to work on it. Maybe, I don't know, it's uh, something that came to my mind sometimes. Uh, so Ashlyn asks uh, about mentorship. Uh, do you mean the mentor right. project part? So Ashlyn, so Fedora participates in a couple programs. So I'll talk about one first and then the book can take over. So I coordinate for Outreachy and I can actually just drop a link in there. So um, Fedora usually does a couple Outreachy interns in a summer. And this is a program specifically geared towards um, women, um, Black and African American, Hispanic, Native American, um, people who are facing discrimination for gender, et cetera, in their home country. So uh, we usually have uh, three or four slots a summer, and they're, they're on different topics, mostly technical but occasionally we will do something different. Like this summer we had a design internship um, and those run 12 weeks. It's paid and it's a pretty cool program. It's how I got involved with Fedora. Uh, Sumatra, you can ask uh, to join. So Shea, do, you yeah. talk, do you wanna talk about um, Google Summer Code a little bit? Sure. So Google Summer of Code is a program by Google where it pays organizations uh, to encourage students to participate in open source and do a live project for three months. It's very much like internship with the organization, which Google takes care of the financial side of things or the portals on or how you interact. Or, uh, organizations come up with, let me add some mantra. So there we go. I approve it. Organizations and different community members come up with projects and usually GSOC org admins, as we are called, Sumantro is an org admin, I'm org admin, Bex was doing a lot of great things earlier. Org I admins accept, I accepted him, but I guess he might not try again. I thought I accepted him, I don't know why it's I think not. All of us accepted him. <laughs> Too much, Too much power. <laughs> That's how we welcome yeah. you, Sumantra. You should know. So uh, we go through the projects and we see if it fits the project, as in Fedora project, and if it fits what GSOC is trying to do. Unlike Outreachy, so that's what the, where the difference is. Outreachy is focused towards diverse thing and to provide a bunch of things for project, not just code. Google Summer of Code, as we know, it's very much focused on code where you work on a project and you try to contribute in the coding manner as much as possible. So we see if it fits the organization's missions and goals, and then we see if they are eligible for GSOC, and then we take them. Uh, we apply them, and then Google sees. Uh, Google also has a bunch of policies to identify how these projects, if they are suitable or not. And once we have them, we accept students out of multiples and hundreds and hundreds of proposals for sometimes one project, depending on how easy how like if, if there's a website related project it would be very famous because there are a lot of students getting into those things so depending on what the project is they get a bunch of proposals and mentors select which student they feel is the most suitable to finish the uh, project in time and then once they do there are three evaluation periods first second and third is the final one and they get paid from google and uh, fedora gets to encourage some very great talent from universities to participate and work on open source without thinking of things like, okay, I have 
yet another problem I would like to do internship and uh, different things and definitely big organization names and Google's Google's name count a lot. So GSOC has a lot of things going uh, about it. And there are some great things in outreach, which is expanding the horizon and not just focused on code, because we all know it's not just code, which makes a project successful. So these two are great things. So, yeah. I have one more thing to add on. Uh, so we have these formal programs that we are a part of, but there's informal mentorship uh, going on all over the project. Um, you know, like you join a, a channel, you ask a question here or there, can slowly build a relationship with some people. Um, and a, a session like, or a, a, an event like this, you can connect with someone a bit more and potentially they can help you kind of navigate some problems. It would be cool to have some kind of like buddy system <laughs> for Fedora. Uh, where you can just ask, you know, like you just when you're new to a place and you're like, I know this is probably a dumb question, but I need to ask. But, um, you know, and you have that. Place. And that's what was always that was great about having a mentor myself when I first started. You can just go to that person and be like, I don't understand. I've never looked at this before. So um, now that GCI uh, actually we're looking at Google Summer of Docs. Um, as a potential, but we actually applied to that and it did not work out for the last round. Yeah, and uh, I would just like to extend this invitation. If you think of a program that's great and that's also offers a bit of yeah, have... outside of just coding abilities, do reach out to us. I would like to know more about the different programs that we can participate in. It's definitely one of the things that I'd be interested to look at. So Niharika, shoot if you have something in mind. I have a question that uh, from the last, uh, I mean, the last vlog I was was the Dresden one. Well, it's the only one I happened. <laughs> but I met the interns that we have in, I don't remember, it was Orishi. I think it was Orishi that were happy working in the, in the Happy Net Packets version for Fedora Appreciation Week. Uh, but I, my question is, they work something inside our project, our the Fedora community, but we have kind of retention policy for these guys that apply, or they uh, just have. I mean, it's not super okay that we work that we help them to to make their their study, their internship to this college, but our. The thing that we have from them is just the product they develop, maybe docs or maybe an application. There is no other obligation after that. Or there is a way that we can reach them or try to help them to incorporate in other teams to help. Yes, so uh, as I said, you know, that's one of the things that I have discussed greatly, some of the frustration about one of the things that I have noticed is often the infra side of team, Nick, can, uh, Nick would understand. Infra team is not informed of what GSOC or outreach mentors are working on. Thankfully, we don't have those problems now. And then at the last moment, they go to infrastructure and say that, hey, we need this thing hosted. And then for like, well, you didn't, you never informed us. We need to fix those parts. We need to make sure that communication is proper. And as I said, you know, who wants this project and how much value does it add? It's not just about having a project. Uh, and okay. That's one of the okay. things. Sorry. No, please, Nick, go ahead. It'll be nice whenever CommuniShift gets um, set back up. Uh, well, we all know CommuniShift has uh, yay chances of coming back, right, GDPR. I'm, uh, I won't have my hopes very high on that, <laughs> but uh, let's see how that goes. Yeah, because I, I think... I didn't realize there was GDPR implications. I thought it was that they were waiting on someone to set up the RDU data center. That's that's there, but I'm just looking at this other part as well. And uh, if you s attended CP, uh, the quiz, pub quiz thing that we set up, in that one of the thing was, the original idea of community ship was that we give you a place where you can do stuff with your project and you get to experience and experiment and try to play around with different federal projects and that can be in future integrated in these things. So community shifts 
goal has been narrowed down there is obviously coming a shift and i think it will come back soon but yeah and what we've also been doing is creating some aws instances yes if someone wants to host something um a lot of times the answer ends up being okay we're not maintaining it but we'll give you a server to go have fun with Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's uh, again a sustainability part comes in picture. Uh, like you can just pro develop this project, but you also need to take care of it as it's your project, and then form a community around it. It's not just about coding and because we all know one person, uh, one point failure is never good in any scenario. So it should not just be mentored the student, but this should also like our summer projects or mentored projects, I should say, should focus more on getting more people involved there rather than just minty working on it there are definitely things that i have in mind and there are i get great feedbacks on how we can do things better but it would be interesting to see how we do it and well there's a mindset seat has just started yeah, for minted projects let's see yeah how do we get in touch with joint team so uh, join the team Yes, uh, you can join on Fedora hyphen join on IRC or at join Fedora on Fedora, I mean on Telegram. I have a doubt, more like a, I don't know, a fire started as usual. <laughs> but in the, in the past years, I mean, in the recent years, uh, a huge difference that I have seen from what things were done on my time uh i see that there is a lot of interest on the external official uh projects for interns why are you laughing <laughs> i know that you're thinking of something that we discussed before but uh but what about the fedora um <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it, it's paraphrasing my myself but it seems that <laughs> You know, if I were in my old house, I wouldn't have all this sort of customs and gadgets and Anyway, so. Just shoot it, shoot it, Tatika. We need to know what you're feeling. It's, it's hard to concentrate with this. Okay, so there is this real concern first. When they finish their projects, either if the, the outreach is Google Summer of Code, what happens there? So if we still click hanging to those external projects, instead of trying to either make our own or try to facilitate a, a more easy interaction from you just doing a project into your joining the project, then I, you know, these people that comes in to help for a couple of months or half a year or one year, then they're going to disappear. And then we're going to end with the same issue that we're not having recurrent and long-term contributors. So <laughs> seriously, guys, you're not helping. <laughs> so I have ideas. <laughs> Sorry, this is kind of... I see them. I'm ignoring it. I have ideas, though. <laughs> Listen, Edward always brings the party. We knew that. That's what he does for the social hour. But... Um, my idea, my real, my thought about this is that it comes from the mentors, right? So it's about the mentors getting maybe some more education and resources on how to be a good mentor and to get in the mindset of that. Like from my experience with Mismo to my experience now having an intern, I'm like looking at that, you know, the in the intern that I'm working with right now is like, you know, this is like the beginning of like a Fedora friendship, right? Like it's not just I'm schooling a newbie or whatever, like this is someone that I care about their development, I care about their fulfillment and um, participation in this project. So there's definitely teachable skills that mentors can get and improve upon to make that more long term. Like if I think about my relationship with Mismo, she was always there encouraging me to stay involved, to participate, reminding me of events like you should submit for Flock or 
whatever it might be, or hey, I'm you know, I'm not even gonna try to hide a recommendation letter to become the F cake. Like this is how this is how far my mentor has stayed with me because at this point she's my friend, right? So I really think like mentorship, if it's in its full capacity, I mean, that's what it looks like for me. It might be different for somebody else and I totally understand that. But no, there's definitely a mindset, a mindset going into it and there's um, specific ways that you can encourage your mentees. Um, and I honestly think for, it was like, example being like a woman, having a woman mentor was like great for me, you know? I needed to have someone that I could talk to about the fact that it's there's like no women here. <laughs> and just the different weird situations you get into socially, like, you know, standing in, in, in a conversation of like 12, 15 people and you're literally the only woman. It's like someone you just talk to about like that situation, right? Or um, someone just kind of give you encouragement to stand up in front of a room full of dudes, whatever it might be. Um, so that's kind of how I feel about mentorship and what we could do better in keeping the mentees retained and, and, and involved in the communities, engaging them as friends. What if we do like a summer camp for mentors? Nice. All right, open a ticket, Classica. You're on the team. Like human, something more like human. I mean, because if the issue is that mentors only, they only stay with the project when it's happening and what happens after. I had the same experience with Lismo. I mean, she was, I, I had even questions about my daily work that had nothing to do with Fedora and she was there. Mommy, so, it, it. Um, so yeah, maybe if we teach people that we are here because we are in a community, that, that's, what I, that's what I wanted to say at the beginning. It's not just, uh having a project that you have to fulfill like a task because sometimes it feels that google summer of code and all of that feels like a task you're, you're, you're doing a job because you have a deadline and, and all of that so it's trying to retrieve all the fun so you don't feel that you're doing the job you're doing it because you just like now the, the other part that, that comes with it is what happens when you actually like it and it's the, the really high burnout rate that we have what happens on the long term once that you know that you like it, but you feel that it's get, getting into a work side again. So it's it's actually trying to get a balance between the newcomers who doesn't feel that that it is fun because it's just responsibility because they are on deadlines and they're news and there is a lot of knowledge and there is a lot of people. But there is the other side of that of that side of that table. So there is these people who are already been for several years, they know that they are good at it, they they have grown not just personally but also professionally, and they just got tired because there is no help. So if the mentors are the ones in the middle, then it's not about getting new people, it's not about retaining old people, it's about having those mentors to go towards on a good mindset. Mindset. Well, you know, all of that. And I think looking at it as a friendship or like a, a relationship you're having with the mentee mentor, like it changes it, reframes it a little bit from work to to something a little bit closer to to your heart, maybe. <laughs> Not to get too yeah, savvy. Definitely that helps a lot when you have the uh, you have a previous relationship with your mentor. Like it was my case with Tatika when I entered the project. I don't know. We have met uh, like seven years before I started the Fedora project, something like that. I even took your wedding picture, so yeah. So <laughs> I don't know, it's way too much time to count. <laughs> and I asked Tatika for a lot of stuff, not necessarily inside the Fedora project. We are friends from forever for personal reasons. I met his uh, husband, she met my wife. Uh, also, I I'm pretty sure that Tatika doesn't meet my son in person, but a lot of pictures. Tatika was the photographer of my wedding. Um, it was my first wedding ever. 
So that's a long time, long time. Long time, yeah. So that that helps a lot when you are in in when you are being a mentee because uh, you have respect for the person that is mentoring you. So you you know what they are talking to you in the best interest of you. Okay, so that helps a lot in the in the that trust that you can have with the mentor is need to be built to be a a great mentor. Cool. Well, we made it to the end of the session.